my name is Raihan and uh, I'm a senior software engineer at AppScout. Uh, I'm one of the engineers uh, working uh, with the KubeDB. Uh, as the title said, today we're going to talk about enhancing open search management in Kubernetes by implementing hot home code cluster using KubeDB. So uh, KubeDB already had uh, support for hot home code clustering using uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, now, in our recent release, we are also providing support for hot on cluster using open source as well. Um, so let's see what is uh, basically uh, open search and uh, what is the hot on cluster. We are going to go into that. Uh, but before that, let's uh, take a sneak peek on the, how we are going to go through this web webinar. So at first, we're going to talk about Open search and it's a hot on hot on code architecture. After that, we're going to discuss a little bit about uh, KubeDB, why you should use KubeDB, and how KubeDB uh, is used for provisioning and managing open search. We are also going to see uh, how to provision open search hot on code cluster through a live demo session. After that, we're going to uh, see how you can set up open search. Uh, ISM or index state management policy to monitor the transition between hot room and cold cluster. We're also going to integrate open source dashboard with open source in this webinar. And finally, we're going to announce some of our, uh, our upcoming features and then go through a QA session uh, where you can ask me questions uh, regarding this uh, feature that we are extending. Okay, so let's see what is open search and what is the uh, bottom goal architecture that open source indicates. So basically, open source is an open source search and analytics engine uh, that is designed to provide powerful and scalable search capabilities for various data types, including text, numeric, and geospatial data, especially. So it is an open source alternative to Elasticsearch, offering a high level of flexibility and uh, uh, customization for building search and analytic solutions for data driven applications. So, and what I'm called architecture or hot open clustering is a data organization and storage strategy of it used for open search and similar systems like El Elasticsearch. It involves dividing data into three distinct tiers or clusters based on its access uh, patterns and importance. Uh, so, what are the hot nodes, warm nodes, and cold nodes? So, Hot nodes or hot uh, or the hot data clusters are most frequently accessed and actively changing data. It, uh, it typically uses high performance hardware and is optimized for fast data retrieval and uh, indexing. Uh, basically, it has uh, generally more the fast hardwares and uh, more resources are allocated to the hot nodes. So the warm cluster nodes are uh data nodes that is less frequently used than the hot cluster but it still requires a uh, relatively quick access it is typically uses less expensive hardware and compared to the hot cluster providing a balance between cost and performance and finally the cold nodes the cold cluster nodes are uh, data nodes that are is uh, really accessed and can be considered uh, to be archival or historical data it uh, is utilizes cost effective, low performance, and hardware for long term storage. So, the hot term uh, clustering strategy allows organizations to efficiently manage and optimize the data storage uh, and access the cost while ensuring the critical data is readily available all the time. This approach is particularly valuable in scenarios where large volumes of data is to be indexed, uh, stored, and uh, queried such as log analytics and time series data analysis. So, so what KubeDB does is KubeDB helps to dedicate it, uh, to deploy or install the dedicated hot run cold nodes and we, along with uh, the master nodes in this node and dedicated data node as well, along with uh, open source uh, dashboard in any cloud Kubernetes cluster. And in this release, we are also adding support for other node types uh, like uh, frozen nodes, machine learning nodes, or ML nodes, transform nodes, coding nodes, coordinating nodes, etc. Okay. So here's how to uh, use KubeDB for provisioning and managing open source. So 
let's assume that uh, you have a kubedb operator installed on your cloud kubernetes cluster and all the kubedb ports are running successfully and if you have that you can deploy a elastic search custom resource crd uh, custom resource definition or crd uh, through which you can deploy open source to your cluster so you have to deploy a elastic search custom resource and under elastic search custom resource we are providing support for installing both open source and elastic search but for this webinar we are also, we are only going to talk about open search here so if you deploy open search uh, with uh, elastic search custom resource what our kubedb provision operator do is it will uh, deploy all the necessary workloads required for provisioning open search so it is going to deploy some services some necessary secrets uh, containing the authentication credentials uh, containing the uh, TLS certificates uh, for SSL secured encryption, and also going to deploy some stateful sets, uh, PDBs, RVX, PVCs, etc. So, once you deploy uh, Elastic Custom Resource, our operator going to take care of all of these workloads, and finally, the stateful sets will deploy the ports uh, for open search with uh, official open source images. and. Uh, if you provide in, if you can provide your own custom configurations. If not, we are going to uh, generate our operator generate. We are going to use our operator generated um, default and very basic configurations to deploy your open source cluster. So, once your open source cluster is ready, uh, you can uh, perform administrative operations like uh, scaling or version upgrading, scaling vertically, horizontally. You can reconfigure your cluster. You can reconfigure TLS on your cluster. You can do all of those uh, with another custom resource, which is called Elasticsearch Ops Request. You can use that and perform those uh, day two op operations on Elasticsearch cluster. You can perform backup and restore operations uh, on Elasticsearch using uh, Stash and uh, you can also uh, monitor your cluster using prometheus and grafana and there are, we have uh, lots of uh, more options for more details of um, for more detailed feature list uh, visit kubedb.com and uh, go to the elastic search page there okay so that's how to uh, that's how kubedb can help you in provisioning and managing open search so let's start our live demo session so uh, we're going to do deploy an Elasticsearch hot on cold cluster. And before that, you need to install kubedb. To install kubedb, uh, you will need a license. Uh, you can get the license from our license server. For that, visit kubedb.com. You will get a 30-day free trial to your license first. OK. So at first, we need to uh, install kubedb. Then we will uh, provision open source hot on cold cluster using a very simple YML. Uh, after that, we are also going to deploy open source dashboard using uh, our elastic search dashboard custom resource definition. We are going to test uh, the data transition to hot on cold nodes. How does uh, that happen? We are going to see that. And fi finally, we are going to show you how to set up uh, ISM policy and monitor the rollover of indices. Uh, we are not going to uh, go deep into that. We are just going to show how to set, set uh, the ISM policy for uh, time short. Okay, so here's how to install kubedb. This is a sample YML. You need to install the recent version or the latest version of a kubedb, which is version 2023.10.9, uh, which is uh, this uh, October release. And here you can install kubedb. Uh, you have to enable provisioner ops manager dash and a dashboard, uh, basically for uh, deploying uh, open search and uh, managing its uh, data operations with it. And you can, as I have already said, you can acquire the 30 the trial period license uh, from our license server or contact the apps code team for this. Okay. So I will move to my terminal. Okay. So this terminal I have connected to a Linux cluster that I'm using. It's a Linux Kubernetes engine or LKE. Can see I have three Linux nodes uh, running here. Three LK engines are running, and I have already installed kubedb. So as you can see, kubedb version. This is the kubedb Helm chat that I have already installed. The version is this. 
been by the October release. Okay. And this is my Kubernetes version that I'm using. So my Kubernetes client or Kubectl version is 1.20, uh, 28.0. And the Linux server or the Kubernetes uh, server version is 1.27.5, which is I'm using here. So everything I will deploy to this uh, demo namespace. I'm watching all the resources, all the port service secrets, Elasticsearch and Elasticsearch dashboard. I'm watching all of these resources over this terminal. So I'm going to deploy this uh, YML here. So as you can see, this is a custom resource provide, uh, that you can deploy. Uh, like any other Kubernetes resource, it has an API version kind, metadata, and spec section. In the API version uh, section, the API version should be kubedb.com slash beyond alpha two. The kind should be Elasticsearch. Metadata section, you can name your cluster, provide the namespace where you want your cluster to, to deploy to. You have to provide the version uh, uh, which you want to deploy for open search. I'm going to deploy open search version 2.8.0, which is the latest supported version by kubedb. So, yeah, there's something else. Uh, so if you type this, gives it will get ES version and grip open search. We'll find out all of the supported versions by open search uh, by kubedb. These are all the supported versions by kubedb for open search. So the latest supported version one is open source 2.8.0. Okay, so we are going to use that. So you have the name your version here. You can uh, set in SSL to two if you want your cluster uh, to be a TLS secure, both uh, at uh, port to port communication or Elasticsearch cluster to client communication as well. So, uh, you can set the storage type to durable if you your uh, PVC is not to be deleted when you uh, uh, when you maybe accidentally delete your cluster, or you can also set it uh, to ephemeral if you want the opposite. So I'm deploying a topology cluster here for this, as I want uh, dedicated nodes for uh, each of the node types. I'm deploying a master master node in just node, data hot node or hot uh, hot uh, or nodes with hot attribute, uh, the data warm cloud nodes and the data cold nodes. So I have uh, added, uh, I want to add some uh, suffix there. I'm going to add uh, this suffix master after the master ports, uh, after master port names. Uh, the ingest will be using this suffix, this client. So cl the ingest ports will be uh, recognized by the suffix client at the end. And this uh, doesn't need any suffix. I'm going to use the storage class, uh, Linode block storage, which is the default uh, storage class for Linode Kubernetes engine. And I'm requesting just uh, one gigs of uh, storage for each of master and uh, in this node. For the hot or cold node, this is the setup. As uh, the hot node uh, needs to be more accessible and it's uh, the hardware needs to be uh, much better. Uh, and I am setting the CPU to use uh, 1.5 cores and the CPU request will, the memory request will be two gigs and I'm limiting the memory request to be three gigs and the CPU request uh, should be limited to two, uh, two cores only. For the data warm nodes, I am using, uh, just I'm limiting it to use just uh, one CPU core and the memory of uh, two gigs. And I'm requesting uh, uh, five gigs for data warm, and five gigs of storage. And for the data cool nodes, I am uh, using a comparatively uh, uh, less uh, less resources uh, uh, less res uh, to use uh, the, the less resource for the port. Here I'm requesting only a half core of CPU, uh, CPU and memory of one gigs and limited it to use a uh, memory of 1.5 gigs only. So I'm going to deploy this uh, sample YML, this simple uh, custom resource to my cluster with a simple kubectl. So I'm going to deploy the YML file. 
Okay. As you can see, uh, the custom resource has been created. And what our operator is doing here now, our QDB provision operator now is deploying all the necessary workloads required uh, for open source hot on cloud cluster. Here at the bottom, you'll find out uh, the open source hot on cloud cluster. It's in provisioning state. Once uh, all the workloads are ready and open source ports are up and ready for the client communication, uh, these uh, custom resources will become uh, ready. And as you can see, operator have uh, generated some uh, secrets. So the secret is on here, which is called open search uh, SWC. SWC stands for hot term cold, the admin credit. Uh, this contains the administration credentials for open search, which we will be using to uh, log into open search and open search dashboard. It helps um, uh, it have this configuration config secret, uh, open source AWC suffix state config. This contains all, all the uh, operator generated default configurations that will set. Uh, if you want your own configuration, you can also create a, a secret uh, where you can put this configuration inside the elasticsearch.oml file and use the secret as custom configurations. We are going to uh, use that custom configuration for Elasticsearch Bootstrap. You will find some other certificates like uh, this uh, Kibana server credential, uh, server credit secret, the Kibana secret, snapshot restore credential. These are uh, secret used to, uh, for integrating open search with uh, other tools and systems. So these are all the secrets. You will also find some uh, certificate secrets, CSR, clan search. Uh, these are generated by the operator. This contains certificates. Uh, operator generated the certificates and CA certificates that can be used for uh, securing your cluster at SSL layer. All your communications should be uh, SSL secured encrypted. Operator had, uh, has also generated some services here, as you can see. These services will be um, used for interacting for, between a port to port communication. Uh, and and the cluster uh, cluster to client communication as well. Okay, so all of my open search uh, ports are running as you can see. This provisioning state will soon be convert to ready. And as you can see, it has deployed two master nodes, as we have uh, described in the YML, two warm nodes, three hot nodes, just a single cold node and this uh, with the client suffix these are two ngs nodes that we have created okay so let's wait for a while until this status gets ready uh typically it takes uh three to four minutes for such a cluster Okay, while it's getting ready, uh, it's taking a while. So in the meanwhile, we can see the open source uh, dashboard YML that we're going to use. This is a sample YML for open source dashboard. You have to use this uh, custom resource definition or CRD Elasticsearch dashboard. You can provide the database reference section. Here you have to provide the name of the database. In this case, which is open source or term code or open source AWC. This can also be uh, set to enable SSL true so that uh, TLS secure communication is uh, possible and you have to deploy it in the same name as this demo as with the uh, cluster itself. Okay, so I'm going to deploy this once uh, open search is ready. So our open source cluster is ready. Open search uh, hot term cold clusters. Uh, it is ready for all the client communication and the database server is also ready. So we are going to, okay. So let's apply the open source dashboard. So once the custom resource is created here, you'll find that, uh, okay. So it got ready pretty, pretty fast. So this is the open source dashboard port, which has been created. And uh, this is the service for uh, primary service for open source dashboard. We're going to use this service to uh, communicate with open source dashboard. 
uh, what we're going to do is uh, the port is 5601. So basically we're going to port forward this uh, open source service to our local host, to our system local host so that we can access uh, the cluster very easily from our uh, Chrome browser. So just jump to our okay. So as uh, the certificates are not, uh, it is really secure communication, and the certificates are not trusted by our browser. So this little message will be shown. So we, can, we are going to bypass it for now. Okay, I think I need to clear out the cache. Okay, now it's going to work. Okay, so OpenSense dashboard has been loaded and it requires username and password to access. So, as we have earlier shown, you need to use this uh, administration credential secret, which contains the uh, authentication uh, username and password. For open source cluster, you can also provide your own custom password for this uh, admin user uh, through a custom secret that you can provide. Okay, for now we are going to, we are using this plugin view secret to directly decoding the secret to base 64 and apply that. Okay, the, the password goes and the user is admin. Now we're going to log into our open source dashboard. So open source uh, dashboard has been loaded as you can see. So here you can interact with open source dashboard to insert data or perform operations on uh, open search uh, data. Okay, so we're going to directly jump to tape tools here. So these are already some preloaded commands I have. So I'm going to run this command cat nodes. So this will let me see all of the nodes that has been deployed. You can see that this open source uh, data, data hot, data warm, cold, and cold nodes, all of these are have node rules data. The open source master nodes have uh, these uh, cluster manager node rules. The open source ingest nodes have uh, ingest and remote cluster client node rules. Now I want to see the node attributes. So yeah, these are the node attributes value uh, for all of the nodes, you can see that for at least one of the uh, uh, hot nodes, one of the warm nodes, and one of the cold nodes are set to uh, the cold attribute temperature. Okay. So that means that we have successfully deployed our uh, open source hot warm cold cluster to our Kubernetes, and uh, it's running successfully with uh, all of them are running with uh, this uh, temp attribute to be hot warm and cold. So now what we're going to do is we're going to insert some data forcefully into the hot node. So let's see uh, if we can do that. So we can use this command to create a new index. We're going to name this to hot data. And in the index settings, you have to provide this one. The index routing allocation is required to be temp, uh, required, to, required to have the attribute temp, uh, temp to be hot. Okay, so what it will do that it will look for the only the nodes which have this attribute temp set to be hot, and uh, it is going to insert this data into there. So I have three data no, uh, three hot nodes. So I'm going to create this. I'm going to create uh, three charts and two replicas for each of them, and create this hot data. So yes. So as you can see, the index has been created acknowledged and shards are also acknowledged so i want to put some insert some data into this index so i'm going to use this command okay so i'm going to insert some data here Okay, I'm saying I need to use the post method. Okay, so I'm going to insert multiple versions of it. Okay, 
So I have inserted some documents into this data and uh, let's see where are the shares located. If you perform this command cat shares on this uh, hot data index, you will find that all of the hot data indexes, uh, all of the primary shares and all of their replica shares, all of them are stored in the hot nodes only. All of the hot nodes, are, they are evenly distributed. If you can see that. Uh, so we have successfully inserted data into uh, the hot note. Okay. So, so uh, we are also going to do that for this uh, warm notes. We're going to, I have two warm notes. So I'm going to set the number of shards to use two. It's the warm data. Okay. And this uh, index routing allocation required temperature, these uh, settings uh, needs to be set to warm so that all the indexes uh so all the all the uh, all the data which are going to be inserted in this warm data index can be uh transitioned to the warm nodes only okay so let's run this we have created so we are also going to we're just simply going to insert this data into the warm ones similarly now if we perform cat shards operations on the warm data index, you can see that yes. So all the primary and replica shares, two primary uh, replica shares and uh, one replica for each of them, all of them has been uh, inserted into only the warm nodes. So that's how you can uh, configure your indexes to uh, to transition your data specifically to one nodes and other indexes to use specifically other uh, nodes with, uh, with uh, maybe less uh, uh, hardware configuration, maybe cheapest ones. Uh, and this, uh, this way you can uh, optimize your performance and cost effectiveness altogether on your open source cluster. So that's how you can provision, manage and uh, use open source hot on cluster very easily. Now you can also do something else, uh, which is a special uh, feature of open search. You can provide ISM policies for your indexes. ISM policies means index uh, state management policy. So basically what are these? Let's assume that uh, you have some daily uh, logging data or some daily logs that you need to process uh, uh, the, 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 that requires to be processed with a very high intensity and uh, that have a very high traffic. And you want your best uh, resource uh, ports to, um, uh, to, to ingest your data. In that purpose, you can use the hot nodes uh, that uh, we have created. So uh, give, give as much as uh, you, can, you, uh, you want to give as much as uh, resources and CPUs to your hot nodes. And uh, you, want after seven, uh, you want your data to be transitioned to the warm nodes automatically after seven days or maybe like one month uh, to the warm nodes. And after maybe after uh, six months or something less, uh, you want your all of your data to be moved to your uh, cold nodes as well. So uh, that's how you want your data to be transitioned to from hot to warm to cold. The most recent recent data should come to the hot uh, nodes. Then after a few while, when uh, they will be less frequently accessed, they can be automatically transitioned to the warm nodes, and finally they can be transitioned to the cold nodes where they will be just. Uh, used as historical storage, uh, that's it, and uh, may not be uh, accessed that much. So in that purpose, you can create an open search uh, state management, index uh, state management policy. So here I have a working sample in uh, JSON that you can use. You can uh, insert that. So I'm just going to show you how to uh, set that up. We are not going to uh, go through this uh as we have a uh, we don't we don't uh there it will take a little more time to show the whole uh transition process but i'm just going to uh walk you through it okay so you can set the policy with a description you can provide the name for the policy hot room cold workflow and there it is in the states of this uh, uh workflow you can provide the states that uh, we are using we're using hot and warm you can also provide cold here so as you can see uh, you can set actions in these states. You can set uh, the rollover action 
uh, which requires minimum indexes of uh, 10 second. And uh, there it is. It should be transition action should happen once uh, uh, to warm nodes. Uh, so your data will be transitioned from hot stage to warm state or uh, more easily to be said uh, from hot nodes to warm nodes and typically in 30 seconds. And you can also set uh, this warm, uh, warm nodes to transition your data to cold nodes maybe after five minutes of 10 minutes. This, uh, I have said this for just for uh, testing purpose. Okay, so that's how we can uh, set uh, through this uh, dev tools or through this uh, JSON command. So you can also use this index management plugin page. Uh, so you can also create the state management policies from here. You can use the visualist editor or JSON editor, the JSON editor, what we have just shown. You can just paste the JSON data in here, or you can use the visual editor. This is also easy. So you can just provide the policy ID or the policy name description. You can add uh, ISM templates there. You can uh, provide the index patterns, maybe for daily data, I can provide daily. You can also provide regex here. So all, uh, all the indexes that have this uh, pattern, uh, we'll use this uh, index uh, state management policy uh, template. Now you can add the states here. Maybe I will add the states what, and uh, that add more. Uh, okay, I have created it. So maybe add more like, uh, Cold state and maybe another state, yes, uh, warm state. Okay, so you can create these states there, and after that, you can uh, order them that uh, this state should be, come uh, before warm. So basically, data will be inserted to hot first, then it will be transitioned to warm. You can set uh, the transition operations that uh, from hot state it should be transitioned to cold. And you can also provide uh, conditions like minimum size, minimum document count, how much document count you need, minimum rollover is, etc. So you can uh, set up these states and finally set up create the policy. And once you create the policy, the data will be uh, uh, the data will be transitioned, like you said. Uh, so you can configure pretty much everything here uh, to get the most benefit from hot or cold cluster. Okay, so basically this is it. Uh, that's how you can uh, deploy open search uh, hot on cluster on your cloud Kubernetes and uh, uh, and perform cost effective operations and perform your uh, database to use less resource uh, for less frequently used data and uh, more resource for uh, more frequently used data. So this is, a, uh, this is a feature that we are releasing with our latest release open source 2023.10.9. Okay. So this is it for today's webinar. Uh, in our upcoming uh, releases, we are going to work with uh, many more uh, latest features and uh, add uh, more latest versions of Elasticsearch and open search. Uh, so keep your eyes on our uh, uh, our websites and our channels. Uh, so uh, I think we can have a Q&A session now. You can ask me any question regarding this webinar. So you don't need data content notes here? Uh, no, we, we don't need data content notes here. Uh, you can, uh, for Elasticsearch, you need to deploy data content node along with a hot on curl cluster. If uh, if you don't have a data node, if you have a data node, you don't need to deploy uh, uh, data content node separately. That's for Elasticsearch only. But for open search, you can uh, just uh, deploy a hot on curl cluster without data, without the need for data node or data content node. Okay. I guess there are no questions here, so I think we can uh, we can wrap it up here.